Hey YouTube, it's Cash. This video is another chapter in my Lo-Fi Tape Machine series. If you are unfamiliar, I'll put a link in the corner and in the description below to the playlist. This video is a threefer where I explore three very different Lo-Fi Tape Machines that alone may not bring enough content for their own lone videos, so I'm lumping them together. I also want to focus on rhythms because there was a post in the Tape Loop Reddit asking for examples of tracks that use tape loops for their foundational rhythm track. Even though I'm covering three machines, the star of this video is this. This is a magic message, or more officially called AVR2 Auto Visual Repeater by Research Electronics Incorporated. This device was used for commercial display information purposes. The idea is that you can suction cup the transducer to the opposite side of glass like in a car or a storefront window. You can trigger the tape loop by tapping on the glass delivering whatever message you want to record. The transducer essentially turns the glass into a speaker. It also can trigger lights or some other display with a 12 volt relay output. There's no record, so you need to record your loop on another device. It comes with a 45 second continuous loop cassette. If you leave at least 15 seconds of complete silence on the tape, it'll turn itself off until it's triggered again. It came with a car adapter, but it'll run off a 12 volt center positive power supply. I had higher hopes of using this like a drum trigger tape loop device, affixing it to the bottom of a rack tom or something like that, but unfortunately the tapping trigger doesn't work. I still find it incredibly unique because it combines the principle of my resonant cymbal speaker with a lo-fi tape loop cassette player. Of course, I have to personalize it a bit with a simple speed mod using one of these motor speed controllers. I used a junk power supply housing to give me the space I need for the controller board and the potentiometer. Now it's time to experiment. The transducer is powerful, maybe too powerful, where it dramatically pings whatever you're resonating in erratic ways depending on the volume and the frequency. I first tried using a cymbal because I have experience with this, but it was a struggle finding a frequency balance, so I placed a toy drum on the cymbal to give it more low end. I use my circuit bent My First Sony, which will have its own video soon, to make a drum loop. Then I experimented with the transducer placement with rhythms. I wanted to add another tape element which brings us to my second lo-fi tape machine. This is a Chico toy tape player. There's a similar version of this made by Fisher Price which I think can be circuit bent in a similar way. I added a speed mod control using the same motor speed controller and swapped the speaker for a quarter inch jack. I also added touch contacts to all the amp chip pins. I put the potentiometer and output on the bottom because it was most convenient with space and maintenance. I also shoot most of my videos from above so it works better for me. As a distorted lo-fi workhorse, I can also use this as an effect utilizing the mic and mic input with the touch contacts.
So here is another drum loop to highlight what this device can do. I realized that the suction cups of the magic message were pointless for what I was trying to do, so I traded them for some drum felt. I made a new cleaner and louder drum loop using a Mattel Synsonics and my Fostex 4-track. This brings us finally to the first demo of this video. I used the Synsonics drum loop played on the magic message resonating a cymbal. And I used a bell loop played on the circuit Chico cassette player. There's also a glimpse of a device that I'm saving for a future video, but I grabbed it on the fly because in the moment I thought it would sound interesting with the stereo mic field.
Here is the third and final tape loop machine. This is a Telex narrator. You may be familiar with the sought after Library of Congress C1. This is a newer version designed for the same market. You can find these for significantly less than the C1, and they are newer, so they typically have less mechanical issues. They share all the same controls, but the C1 has a power cord and some additional connection options. The narrator also has a backup battery or a power supply option. Now I'm going to mix things up a bit. The magic message is resonating a banjo and I'm capturing the audio with a Soundscriber mic capsule that is affected by a Chase Bliss mood. The tape loop is a plucked zither recorded with my circuit bent My First Sony.
The narrator is playing a singing bird's cassette in reverse, then through the Chase Bliss habit. The Akai Rhythm Wolf is through the Magpie Petals Moist. The clock from the Akai is triggering the Pocket Clocket by Moff and Zeph Modular. Two of the various CV outs from the Pocket Clocket are triggering the Racket Metal, which is affected by the Caroline Kilobyte. The other Pocket CVs are triggering the Habit and the Mood. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.